Hey guys, it's Shay. If you didn't know, I'm a huge fan of the Nintendo 64. For the last seven or so years, I've slowly been collecting more and more games for the system, but I also literally just graduated college, so I kind of don't have any money for the games that I want to buy. Now, I do still have a pretty large collection, of which you can watch me play through on my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash Shay. But there are still games that I have left to buy. Games like Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut, or Bomberman Second Attack, or Super Bowling, all of which are well over $200, and I just don't have the money for that right now. So that leaves me with two options. I can either emulate them, or I can buy an EverDrive. Now, I don't have anything against emulating games. In fact, it'd probably make my Twitch streams look a little bit better. But there's something about playing the games on the actual Nintendo hardware that just feels more natural, you know, playing the games how they were meant to be played. So in order to get that retro experience, I decided to invest in an EverDrive 64, which is this thing right here. If you don't know what an EverDrive is, it's essentially a flash cart that loads all its ROMs from an SD card rather than from the flashboard itself. Reproduction carts like this Ocarina of Time Master Quest have the ROM loaded right onto the flashboard, so it can't be changed, nothing can be added, this cart will forever be Ocarina of Time Master Quest. And that's where the EverDrive 64 comes in. It loads its ROMs right off of an SD card that's inserted into the cart. You can play hundreds of N64 games, or even N64 ROM hacks, just right on your actual system. You just stick it in and boom, any game you want. So here's what this video is all about. Which EverDrive should you buy, and why would I be recommending this horrible looking Chinese knockoff over some of the more reputable options? Well, the EverDrive has existed for a while now, and has mainly been manufactured and sold by a single guy named Crix. I won't understate it, what he has done for the N64 community is amazing, and I genuinely appreciate all the work he's put into his product. The only problem, though, is when you go to his website, and you realize just how much he's selling his EverDrives for. If you want to buy the newest version of the EverDrive, it is going to cost you over $200 which kind of defeats the purpose of buying the EverDrive to try and save money. Now, you can still buy older versions of the EverDrive, but that'll still cost you over $150 for what is now an inferior product. So, that's where this comes in. This is the Super 64, and I bought it off AliExpress for $42. I was a little skeptical when I first saw the listing for this. Uh, if you've ever visited the N64 subreddit, you know they absolutely hate these Chinese knockoff EverDrives over there. Uh, they say they're garbage or they don't work or whatever. Um, but I'm here to tell you that the Super 64 is actually really pretty good. Uh, it runs off the same firmware as the Crix's EverDrives, uh, and it's not as good as the Crix 3.0, but it is all around a little bit better than the Crix 2.5 EverDrive, which is his previous model, the one that lists for $150. The Crix 2.5 doesn't have a battery save, and it doesn't have the ability to emulate NES games, and the Super 64 does. I don't know why you'd want to play NES games on your N64, but it's there if you want it. The thing that I think is the most important aspect, which in my opinion makes the Super 64 even better than the Crix 3.0, is the fact that this comes with a 16GB SD card with every single ROM already pre-downloaded onto it. Which means as soon as this arrives in the mail, you can put it in your N64, boot it up, and play any game you want. As for the Crix 3.0, not only do you have to download the firmware, every single ROM you want, and put it all onto an SD card, but your order doesn't even come with an SD card. You're already spending $200 for the cart, but you have to spend an additional $10 to buy your own SD card, which you now personally have to program. That is ridiculous to me. Like from a legal standpoint, like I get it, uh, but at least throw in the SD card, man. Like, come on, it's $10 on a $200 order. Like, I don't know. It just rubs me the wrong way. I don't like it. Anyways, let's actually talk about the Super 64 itself. The left side holds the SD card and the top indicates which region your console is from. I live here in the US, so mine will be set to NTSC. The cart fits very snugly in the console and then when you boot it up, you get this screen. This is the cart's home screen and where you'll find all of your ROMs. The first two folders just hold the files for the firmware, so you probably shouldn't mess with that. And the third folder contains different backgrounds for this menu. I tried changing the background a few times, but when I did the cart would just crash every time I tried, so I guess we're just stuck with the yellow controller. If you press the L or R trigger, then it pulls up this menu with a few different options to choose from. 
You have a favorites menu, which shows you the ROMs that you have favorited for easy access. You have options, which allows you to change SD speed, font size, and TV mode. Just a side note, don't change the TV mode setting. I was messing around with it and changed it to PAL just to see what would happen, and suddenly my TV wouldn't recognize my system's output anymore. So I had to blindly find my way through the options to try to change it back to NTSC. So just be careful. <laughs> Next is device info. It's just nerd stuff, but it's there if you want it. And lastly, there's the about menu, which shows you the controls for navigating the firmware. As shown, if you press C down while highlighting a ROM, you can add that ROM to your favorites list, and C up will load the last ROM that you played. As you can see, the ROM has a short load time before the game launches, but after that, the game plays exactly like a legitimate cartridge. If you see here, I loaded up Pokemon Stadium 2, other EverDrives tend to have a hard time playing this game due to not having a battery save, but I played it for a few hours before this video and everything seemed to be working fine. Uh, as far as other ROMs go, I tested probably 25 of them, pretty much all of the bigger name titles and I'm sure everyone will want to play. Uh, I only had issues with Pilot Wings and this one ROM of GoldenEye. There are two GoldenEye ROMs on this cart and the second one works just fine, uh, but this one doesn't seem to load, so there's that. Besides that, they all seem to work just fine. Also make sure to pay attention to the little letters at the end of each game title. If you're from North America, then your console is probably NTSC, and this will allow you to play all US and Japanese games, but you won't be able to play any European ROMs, and vice versa if you're from Europe. This means that any title with an E at the end of it cannot be played on your NTSC system, which is due to Europe having a totally different electrical system than the rest of the world. So the last thing I want to talk about is how saving works, because it's a little complicated. Uh, one of the few things that makes the Super 64 worse than the Crix 3.0 EverDrive is the fact that in order to save your data, you have to save in-game, and then you have to hit the reset button on your console. That tells the Super 64 to save all the data to the SD card. Um, it sounds a little more annoying than it actually is. Uh, I think if you're saving your data, then you're probably ready to turn your system off. And if you're turning your system off, then you're at your system anyways, so you, hitting the reset button is just an extra five second step. Uh, not that bothersome, but still kind of annoying, I guess. Also, I should mention that for games that require a memory pack inserted into the game controller, still require a memory pack for saving. If you look in the bottom left of the screen, you'll see how each ROM saves its memory. Any game that has these three dashes will require a memory pack to be inserted in your controller if you want your data to be saved. The other types of save files either save the data to the SD card or in a few rare cases to the flashboard itself. Aside from this one quirk, I don't have much negative to say about the Super 64. So to the question, which N64 EverDrive should I get? I guess in the end, it comes down to your ethics and your wallet. If you have the monetary ability to support Cricks, then I say go ahead and do that. His 3.0 EverDrive is the best on the market, and he is the original pioneer of the EverDrive software. If, however, you are short on cash, but still want to experience all the N64 has to offer, then I think the Super 64 is probably your best choice. Now there is one other option besides the Cricks and the Super 64 called the ED64, but after having done plenty of research about that, I can say that it's essentially just a slightly more expensive version of the Super 64. Like literally the only difference is the plastic shell. The flashboards are completely identical, uh, so there's that. Remember, always make sure to do research before buying these products. AliExpress is pretty reputable, uh, but of course, make sure to check customer reviews uh, and seller ratings before you buy anything. Uh, there are a lot of shady people on the internet, and I hate to see any of you get scammed for any reason. Uh, so that being said, I do think for $45, the Super 64 is the best N64 ever drive you can buy right now, factoring in what it can do for how much it costs. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, one last plug for my Twitch page. I'm currently playing through every single N64 game ever. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Shay. Feel free to come over and say hi. Um, but that'll do it for me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.